here today. But uh, meanwhile, the Defense Minister, Dominic Nitiwo, has also called out former President Mahama to stop discrediting the military he was once a commander-in-chief of. What is happening in Banda and happens in Banda is a very clear duty by the gun, members of the government forces to respect the order of or the orders of the regional security council. The regional security council held a meeting with the parties, agreed with them not to bash people, agreed with them that people should not physically prevent others, and also agreed with them that they should deploy security, including the military. And so the military was rightly deployed by the regional security council to ensure that their orders were strictly followed. It is in their interest not to try to run down the only institution that would be the last man standing to protect us. He was just the commander-in-chief four years ago, and I'm very much worried that he's taking a deliberate step to run down the military of Ghana. He did it in Aplawo. He was called out. He couldn't provide evidence. He's doing it again. Let him and let the NDC know that the military of Ghana is a very professional institution. They will not and cannot be used by any individual to do their death work. The days when the military could be used to do that are over. And I've always said, any party that, should be, that has a history of using the military to do things that are not good, is the NDC. Any clean election in Ghana that is the vote of violence, cheating, intimidation, who father will win that election over your mama any day. We don't need to. We don't need to. If the NDC have policies, they should bring the policies on the table. And that was the Defense Minister Dominic Neto there calling out former President Mahama to stop discrediting the military he was once commander-in-chief of. Let's go back to Parliament and hear uh, Dominic, uh, that is James Agalga, who is ranking member of the Defense and Interior Ministry. He also added that the failure of the Regional Security Council in the region to address the issue is only a mark that the President has failed. The fundamental issue is that Rexet is not a law unto itself. And so whenever Rexet takes decisions that are unlawful, say it must be condemned in no uncertain terms. Rexet cannot take a decision that in the uh, 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 final analysis can prevent people from having access to registration centers, mounting road blockades, using our armed forces. The Rexet has not got any such power. Rexet can only operate within the confines of our law. And so where it is very clear and palpable that Rexet itself has acted contrary to law, say must be blamed. In any case, who is Rexet accountable to? Rexet is accountable to the National Security Council chaired by our president. And so the failure of Rexet in that region is the failure of the president. Right, and that was the ranking member on the Defence and Interior Committee of Parliament there, James Agalga. And uh, I understand we have reached our correspondent, our reporter, who has been following up on this particular issue. Larry Park with Moses, he joins us on the line. Larry, uh, what is the latest on the Banda issue uh, as we speak? Yeah, the latest is that calm has returned to the Bongasi electoral area and the Akanyakum electoral area. As at the time, we're living with polling uh, registration centers. Uh, the, those from the island uh, uh, community are going through the registration process to ask it to register and get their respective uh, voting. Uh, uh. Hello, Larry. Yes. Hello. Right. Again, we, we want to find out those who were prevented from registering earlier, uh, were they able to register at all? Yeah, that is what I am saying, that mm. uh, calm has been restored in the two electoral areas. That is the Bongase electoral area and the Akanya Chrome. After the time we were living, those two communities, those from the island communities, that is the 32 uh, communities within the island that were prevented earlier from not voting, are now being allowed to go through the registration process and get their respective voting cards. So now calm has been restored in in the two electoral areas. Okay, and uh, what is the uh, security situation like in the area? The security situation has been built up. Uh, after the time, we were living the two areas. We, we saw the SWAT team from Accra 
to the area. So uh, I can tell you that security is on high alert here. Um, you can see the police plus the military here, including the SWAT team from Accra to, as it were, augment the, the security situation within the Banda constituency and Bongasi to be specific, and then Akanyokro. But I can say that there is relatability in the area now. All right, Larry, thank you for the update. I'm sure that we'll be getting more from you. We understand that the Volta Caucus in Parliament is heading towards Banda. Subsequently, we'll get more from you uh, and see what happens there. But that was Larry Parkwisi Moses, our man on the ground on the whole uh, issue that has come up in the Banda area. Meanwhile, the Ghana Armed Forces has released a statement reacting to this incident. The statement signed by Director of Public Relations Colonel E. Agrikwashi noted that on July 30, 2020, the Buno Regional Security Council met representatives of the two main political parties that is the MPP and NDC to deliberate on the peaceful conduct of the registration exercise. According to the Ghana Armed Forces, this follows the disturbances that resulted in the unfortunate demise of one person. The agreement was signed by NPP parliamentary nominee Joe Dankwa and incumbent MP for Banda and NDC nominee Ahmed Ibrahim and witnessed by the regional minister. The statement from the Ghana Armed Forces concluded by saying the security agencies were therefore available to support the RECSEC broker agreement and the statement added no specific ethnic group was targeted in this regard and uh, we'll see what will come out of that also but security analyst and the executive director for the institute of security and safety research sadiq edu chum has also called on the ruling government to be transparent with security issues as we head to the december polls according to him the current issues with the voter registration exercise are an indication of what could happen in december polls if you look at what happened or what is currently happening in the voter region and the region, um, it is an open secret that what the ruling government is supposed to do is to, is to see that that is your opponent's stronghold. So anything short of very, very, very being very transparent with, with issues of security in this regard uh, breaks the ground for chaos. Mm. And that whatever that is happening is just uh, a, a bit of what can happen uh, if care is not taken. Again, he condemned security services for its engagement in electoral matters. Then mm. is who determines eligibility of a voter. I think the processes are very clear, right? So, so who is supposed to ensure that it is the duty of the electoral officers around? It is not the duty of a, even a police officer who has been designated at a, at a, at a certain pool, uh, uh, registration point. It is not that uh, 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 police officer's duty to, 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 to ascertain who is eligible or not. It is the duty of the electoral officers. Until such a time that maybe there is a chaotic situation that the security apparatus needs to come in, they do not have any business in ensuring and, and asking whose eligibility it is. And that was the security analyst and the executive director for the Institute of Security and Safety Research, Sadiq Edu Chum. We're still talking matters on elections because the Electoral Commission says anyone in doubt of the eligibility of a voter should do so using the challenge uh, form during the exhibition process. Deputy Commissioner in charge of corporate services, Dr. Bosman Asari, maintained citizens must desist from the use of violence in challenging persons who they suspect are not qualified to register in the ongoing exercise. The commission maintains that if you suspect someone is not qualified to register, do not physically or verbally prevent the person from registering. Rather, just get the challenge form at the registration center and challenge the person. The challenge forms are available at all the registration centers. And it's also important to emphasize that the exhibition of the register provides another opportunity for the names of applicants who do not qualify to be objected to in the register. Well, according to the Commission, over 15.1 million voters have been registered as of Saturday, August 1, 2020. And the Electoral Commission has exceeded its 15 million voter registration target. The Commission is likely to exceed this target in the final phase of the registration. And as a Commission, we have maintained that 
registered voters between 14 to 16 million should be considered very, very much acceptable. But looking at what we are seeing, we may likely get uh, 16 million people registered. And the commission has also backtracked on its decision to make up for the time lost at some registration centers where there were reports of delay on Sunday, July 12. The, the places we had the problem with the machine. We noticed that in these same places, on the 4th, the 5th and the 6th days of registration, the people were nowhere to be found. Most of the people had already registered, if not all of them. So for those particular places, there will be no extension. But I remember last week, the chairperson mentioned that there will be a mop-up at some selected uh, places. So all those people who were not able to register when the teams got to their centers can take advantage of that. All right, and the exercise we understand will continue tomorrow despite the day being a public holiday. This hot edition, and uh, let's go back to our uh, earlier story talking about developments in Banda and the Banda constituency. I understand that we've been joined on the line by Joe Dankwa, who is MPP parliamentary nominee. The statement uh, that was released by the Ghana Armed Forces, I just read to you the statement, added no specific ethnic group was targeted in this regard. And Joe Dankwa is the new patriotic party parliamentary nominee he joins me on the phone to have a conversation on this development in the area mr Dankwa, a very good evening to you and we're grateful for your time good evening great briefly can you tell us what exactly happened in your constituency on sunday briefly uh, thank you very much let me also take this opportunity to greet your child's lessons uh you will remember that some few days ago there were this problem at Banda that um, resulted in some people being wounded and one person got dead. Right. So um, we were invited by the Regional Security Committee, uh, Bono Region, on the 30th years of this month. There we had a meeting and the meeting was on how to bring peace to Banda constituents. So after the meeting, some recommendations were made and we as candidates myself and the NDC parliamentary candidate he is also the member of parliament for the area Ahmed Ibrahim signed onto some agreement and in that document we agree that nobody should pass people to the registration center because that is the source of the problem so people who are qualified people who are of sound mind to go there to do the registration themselves and that if they go there and you have a problem with them you could go ahead and challenge so that was what we agreed on unfortunately yesterday we saw the general secretary of the NDC receiving the fear passing people to go to the registration center we saw them in the video and that brought and problem, the confusion in the constituency. So that was what happened. Okay, so but really, we understand that the military says they were only there to help enforce an agreement you signed with your counterpart to stop uh, busing people to the registration centers. But if indeed they are residents, they should go to the registration center on their own. Isn't isn't that the case? I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That was, a, that was the agreement that we all signed. The, there's RISEC. You all know RISEC um, is represented by the various security agencies. The military, the police, the fire service, immigration, and others. And usually headed by the regional minister. Right. So we were there. We were invited. And after the negotiations, that is exactly the agreement that we all uh, reached. And that's exactly what we we were expecting the security people to make sure is implemented. So we were shocked. Mm. We were shocked that the NDC General Secretary, when they passing people himself to, to the registration center and coming out again to criticize the other security agencies. How would you My General Secretary, John Bodu was there, he went to the constituency. He did not see any passing of people, he did not see anything. He went there as a uh, somebody who is there to monitor the registration exercise and we'll find out exactly some of the problems there. 
Okay. The secretary of home, they, 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 they easy one day, and it was a different story altogether. Mm. Okay, well, we are grateful for your time. I'm sure we'd also want to hear the side of uh, the minority there also. They have raised concerns, and they've actually condemned all the activities that came up in the Banda constituency. Already we understand that the Volta Caucus in Parliament are heading uh, towards the Banda constituency, and I'm sure we'll get more detail from them also when they get there, picking their reactions on what they make of all these developments. But that was Joe Dankwa, who is the NPP parliamentary nominee for the area there. We'll move on now to some more. And President Ekufado has urged Ghanaians who have not yet registered for their voter ID cards to do so, so they can decide who leads the country in the December 7 elections. While registering for his voter ID card, the president was emphatic. He has delivered his mandate successfully and confident Ghanaians will give him a second chance. President Ekufado and the First Lady Rebecca Ekufado went through all the necessary processes, including the COVID-19 precautionary measures, to register for their voters' ID cards at the Rock of Ages polling station B, Chebi, New Town, in the Eastern Region. You're choosing the government of your choice. What will be sad is to sit in the house and then other people take a decision for you. So it's better that everybody who has not yet registered should come out and register. It's a simple process, it's not complicated. Well, the president was confident that he has delivered and that Ghanaians will give him another mandate come December 7th. In 2016, I asked the people of Ghana to give me a chance and see my handiwork. They gave me the chance. So it is now for them to decide you know, how they see the world. And the registration, we understand, is part of the president's three-day tour of the eastern region he is expected to meet eastern regional mpp leadership and commission some government projects in the region away from the eastern region now the ashanti regional minister simon osei mensa has blamed the security detail of the member of parliament for aswasi insisting he was performing what he describes as unassigned duty leading to recent clash at a registration center at Ababu. The head of the Shanti Regional Security Council spoke to William Evans Inkum after the Asantehene had registered in the last phase of the voter registration exercise. Simon Ose Mensa says the voter registration exercise in the region has been generally peaceful. Actually, generally, everything has been successful except some few incidents that occurred at uh, Asokore Mampong or Aswansi constituency in Atejura. And it will be recalled that on Monday, July 27, a viral video showed a policeman in a heated confrontation with a self-acclaimed national security operative who pulled a gun on the police officer as a military man at the center tried to separate the feuding pair. Speaking to the incident, Simon Osei Mensa wondered what the security detail of Mohammed Mubarak Muntaka was doing at the registration center. If there is that particular issue, first of all, the security of the member of parliament did not do well. He's, he's not supposed to provide security at the registration center. We have security people manning the registration center. Uh, so he didn't have been there in the first place. If he, maybe he was following the member of PAM, that could have been a different thing. But to go and station there as if he was providing security at the place was wrong. Equally, what the other person did wasn't also right. They should have reported to the security personnel mining the registration center for them to take the necessary action. And that was the Ashanti Regional Minister, Simon Osei Mensah. We go to the courts now where the Bole Magistrate Court has remanded to police custody Latifa Bumaye, the lady on the viral video who led the lynching of 90-year-old Madame Ikuyadente at Kafaba in the Savannah region. Now, this was after she made her first appearance in court after her arrest last week. 
the police prosecutor told the court presided over by his worship andrew prince kujo that latifa bumaye is one of the suspects on the run but was apprehended at a hideout at a community called kejewu in the east gonja municipality of the savannah region and requested for her to be remanded pending further investigation by the police his worship andrew prince kujo granted the request by the police prosecutor Earlier, five other persons who were arrested in connection with the lynching of Ikuadente were remanded for three weeks by the Bali Magistrate Court. But the main suspect who instigated the lynching, a traditional priestess, is yet to be found. It was the priestess who is said to have fingered Ikuadente as a wish. The incident was captured on camera and went viral. She is to reappear on August. 20. This is Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. Let's do some business updates now. And in business, the Ministry of Trade and Industry will effective Monday, August 10, embark on a nationwide enforcement exercise of the GIPC Act. Under the new GIPC Act 2013 Act 865, the minimum capital required for retail business has been moved from 300,000 US dollars to 1 million dollars, while foreign investors who participate in joint venture enterprises have to show a minimum capital of two hundred thousand dollars public relations officer of the ministry prince Boache, explains the delay in enforcement we're supposed to have uh, continued 